Let's do a physics problem just for fun. And I'm going to use the board. I normally don't use the board, but I like the board and I like the way it looks and I like this chalk. So let's just get to it. And I, I already kind of set this up in a previous video, but let's just do it. So here the idea is that you have a block like this. And as you push at different angles with friction, you can figure out how much you have to push to hold it up, right? I can figure out how much I have to push to hold it up like this or straight against the wall. But what about at an angle of 45 degrees? What force do I have to push on this block to hold it up at an angle of 45 degrees? So I'm going to solve the problem generically, and then we'll put in that particular value, and then we can think about the solution. It's a pretty fun solution. Okay, so here's my block right there. I'm going to start off with a free body diagram. So I know I have the downward gravitational force, mg, uh, and then I have this pushing force right here. I'll call it fp this way. And so this angle is 45 degrees. That's theta. Now, there's also a normal force from the wall pushing that way, right? Because the normal force is perpendicular to that surface. So we can call that n. We don't know what it is. It's just a force of constraint, but it's there. And then finally, I have the upward pushing frictional force, F friction. Now, we do have a problem with friction. It's static friction. And with static friction, it's, uh, we use the following model. So for static friction force, the magnitude of the static friction force is less than or equal to some coefficient of friction, mu, times the normal force. So the friction force, we can't calculate the exact value, right? I can only calculate the maximum value. I can say maximum. And so I'm gonna, if I use the maximum friction, it's going to be the minimum pushing force. Yes, I could push a lot harder, and that's another question. How hard can I push before it slides up? That's a pretty good question. I just thought of that, but we'll do that one later. We'll just stick, stick with this one. So we're going to be looking at F max, which is equal to, uh, and I'm going to drop the S just to make things simpler, mu, that's a Greek letter mu, times n. So it's a force of constraint. Okay, now we can write down Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the net force, if it's at equilibrium, the net force F net is equal to zero, and that's the zero vector. Well, it turns out to be easier to break this into an x direction and a y direction, so I could rewrite that as f net x is equal to zero, f net y is equal to zero. So let's write down the net force in, in the x direction first. So in the x direction, what do I have? Well, I have the normal force, so I have n, and then I have a part of this pushing force. So let me draw that right here, and that's theta. So this is my x component, and this would be my y component. So if this is fp, this is going to be fp cosine theta in the negative direction. And that would be equal to zero. So that's my x equation. Right, the net force is in, in the x direction. Now in the y direction, I have three forces. Right, I have the gravitational force, I have friction, and then a component of that. So let's write that down. It's going to be equal to F friction plus Fp sine theta minus mg equals zero. Okay, so right up here, I can solve this for n. So this gives me, is that too low? See, I can go down. I can go down to about here. Okay, I'm just looking at my watch, so I can see where the camera is. Okay, if I solve that for n, I get n equals f p cosine theta, and then if I use that along with this, I get the friction force. F friction is mu times n, which is f p cosine theta. So let's put that in right up here. I'll dry it up here. So I have friction force is this, mu fp cosine theta, and then I have fp sine theta, and then I have minus mg. So I can solve that for fp, it's not too bad. I'll move this to the other side of the equation, add mg to both sides. The magic of an eraser board equals mg. You like that? 
I can factor out the FP, FP mu cosine theta plus sine theta equals mg. And then I can solve for the whole thing, and I'm, I'm going to put it right here. So if I solve that for FP, I get FP equals mg over mu cosine theta plus sine theta. OK, now we can kind of check this, right? I know this has to have units of newtons. So this has units of kilograms times newtons per kilogram, which is newtons. So that's force. That's the force. And on the bottom, this coefficient mu is a, just a coefficient. It has no units. Cosine is a ratio. So it has no units. Sine is a ratio. It has no units. Okay, But we're, we're done. Let's just go ahead and put in our values uh, just for fun. FP is the mass. I said it was 0 0.5. I'll leave off the units right here just because I don't want to write it. This is 0 0.5 times cosine of 45 plus, five, plus sine of 45. And now I need my calculator. I'm going to use this on, uh, OK, 0.5, enter, 9.8 times 0.5, enter, 45, cosine times 45, sine plus divided by. And I get 4.62. Now let's just check, right? Because it should be easiest just to hold the things. Well, maybe not necessarily. Okay, I'll show you in a second. But let's just compare that to if I hold the thing straight up, mg would be the mass times g. That's the net force. So I, if I put in 0.5, uh, enter 9.8 times, I get 4.9. So this is actually a little bit less than that. It's actually kind of surprising. What angle, the great question, what angle would be the best? What angle would, would give you the, the lowest friction? Or right, let's check a couple other things. What if the coefficient of friction is zero? If the coefficient of friction is zero, um, then I'm pushing, it's just that component of the upwards pushing force would be holding it up. That makes sense, right? That's FP sine theta would be equal to mg. That makes sense. What if the special case of coefficient of friction is 1? In that case, we can kind of imagine what's going to happen, right? Because on the bottom, we have cosine plus sine. So as theta increases, cosine decreases, sine increases. So um, you know where would that maximum be? 45 would be the answer. So if you were plotting this, and I've done this already, so I know this, uh, this is the minimum friction force as a function of theta. So if you have uh, a coefficient of friction of 1, it goes like this. So you have a, the smallest uh, force needed would be when these two are equal, and that would be at 45 degrees. And so that's that minimum right there. Now, if I have a smaller coefficient of friction, so this is mu equals 1, um, then you have to push harder, but you get something like this. So the minimum is some different value. Uh, I think if a minimum value, I looked this up, was 63 degrees approximately right there if mu is 0 0.5. But you know, it's a, it's a fun problem. You could also, if you wanted to, you know, do use this as a max minimum problem, but it's not an easy derivative. You got these things in the bottom. You'd probably have to do some tricks over something like that. But okay, there you go. Chalkboard problem. Hope you like that. I had fun. That's it.